Do you have a fear? Maybe it's flying. The waiting at the airport, the rolling of the plane onto the runway, and then the dreaded takeoff. In this video, we're going to look at a technique that has been commonly used by people to successfully reduce their fears. Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear It In Mind. On this channel, we explore the world of psychology so that we can better understand ourselves and others. We're back with another video exploring the topic of psychopathology. In the previous video in the series, we explored the behavioural explanation for phobias. If you haven't yet watched that video, click the link above or in the description below because we're going to build on that and move on to look at the behavioural treatments for phobias. There are two behavioural treatments we are going to focus on. One is called systematic desensitisation and the other one is called flooding. Remember that the main focus for the behaviourist approach is on how behaviours learn from the environment, in particular the role of stimulus and response learning, and this is specifically broken down into classical conditioning, how behaviours are learned through association, the name Ivan Pavlov may ring a bell here. Then there is operant conditioning and how behaviours are learned through reinforcement, specifically positive and negative reinforcement. We'll be using these same ideas that we looked at to explain phobias to this time treat phobias. So let's look at our first treatment. Systematic desensitization is based on classical conditioning. Someone may have developed a phobia because they've associated something with a negative experience. For example, someone may have a fear of balloons because when they were very young, they were happily playing with a balloon, but one burst right in front of their face, making a loud bang and were subsequently frightened. In order to treat the patient, the association between the conditioned stimulus, a balloon, and the conditioned response, fear, needs to be broken. And this happens by replacing the fear response with an opposite response, relaxation. This process is called counter-conditioning. This is where the person is taught to associate the object or situation they fear with a new response, something relaxing. The reason why this works is because of reciprocal inhibition. This is the idea that two opposite emotions cannot coexist. For example, fear and relaxation can't be present at the same time. So one emotion prevents the other. And it's called systematic desensitization because it's a way of treating phobias in a systematic way, which means there is a system or plan or process to go through. And in terms of the word desensitized, you see the word sensitized or sensitive. If we are sensitive to something, we feel it, we respond to it. If we are desensitized, we have less of a response to it. For example, some people have argued today that we are so used to seeing violence and murder in TV shows and films that we are desensitized to violence we don't respond to it as shocking. In relation to phobias, what systematic desensitization tries to do is desensitize you to your feared object. The process of systematic desensitization comes in three parts, and to illustrate this, we're going to use the fear of balloons. Number one, relaxation. The person is taught to deeply relax, which could be through techniques like breathing exercises or visualisation like picturing your summer holidays on the beach. The aim here is to reduce the activity of the sympathetic nervous system, which is what produces the fight or flight response, and instead activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Secondly, an anxiety hierarchy. The patient and the therapist then work together to produce an anxiety hierarchy. A hierarchy in this context is referring to a system of arranging things in a particular order of intensity. In terms of phobias, you would produce a list of scenarios about the feared object or situation that would produce anxiety, and then you would order this from what would be considered the least frightening or intense at the lowest level up to the most frightening at the top level. For example, in relation to the fear of balloons, we might start out by simply talking about balloons, then look at a few pictures of balloons, then watch the film Up, which you haven't seen, it's a great film, lots of balloons. 
then stand at a distance whilst you watch someone make a balloon animal, progressing to actually holding a balloon. The third part to systematic desensitization involves gradual exposure. It is now at this stage that the patient is actually exposed to the feared object or situation. This does not happen all in one go, but over a number of sessions. They'll work through each level of the hierarchy, making sure they are relaxed at each exposure until they can reach the most feared level and respond with relaxation. In our example, the patient starts at the lower end of the hierarchy by simply talking about balloons and uses their relaxation techniques. When they're able to stay relaxed at that level, they will then progress to the next level looking at pictures and again use their relaxation technique, eventually working all the way up to holding the balloon and being relaxed. And with today's technology, it's also possible to use what's called VRET, which stands for Virtual Reality Exposure Therapy. This is referred to as an in vitro form of systematic desensitization. Here, patients can work through each level of their anxiety hierarchy with the added control and safety of virtual reality. Our second behavioural treatment is flooding, which comes in stark contrast to systematic desensitization. Flooding is all about exposing the person to the very object or situation that they fear, and this is done suddenly, with no gradual build-up or exposure. It's immediate and direct exposure. According to Pavlov and his idea of classical conditioning, we learn phobias because we have associated the feared object or situation with a negative outcome or experience. What flooding does is expose the person directly to their fear and no effort is made to reduce or avoid anxiety. So, with our example of the fear of balloons, the therapist is not going to sit you down and have a nice chat over a cup of tea about how pretty balloons are. No. They're going to do something like stick you in a room with a load of balloons and lock the door. If they cannot avoid the situation, they're going to learn that the thing they are so afraid of is not as harmful as they originally thought, and that their anxiety will eventually subside. More specifically, in relation to classical conditioning, flooding is based on the idea of extinction. They're trying to extinguish the learned association they have formed, in this case between balloons and their fear response, through continuous exposure so that their anxiety levels decrease. Now, let's evaluate both of these treatments for phobias. There's a wide range of supporting evidence for the positive impact that systematic desensitization can have on phobias. Lang and Lazovic in 1963 conducted research into systematic desensitization with people who had a fear of snakes. The participants, who were all students, went through 11 sessions to work through their anxiety hierarchy. Relaxation techniques were used, which included the use of hypnosis to help people stay relaxed. They found that participants' ratings of fear reduced after treatment, and this was still evident six months later. Secondly, research by Rothbaum et al. in 2000 used virtual reality exposure therapy, as well as standard exposure, with people who had a fear of flying. Participants were given eight sessions over six weeks, and following treatment, participants then agreed to take a real flight where they measured participants' willingness to fly and their anxiety levels. They found that their anxiety levels were lower than a control group who had not received systematic desensitization, and this improvement was also maintained when they followed up six months later. One strength of systematic desensitization is that it's less traumatic compared to flooding because the gradual exposure to the feared stimulus, as well as the experience of relaxation, can actually be pleasant. Whereas, being immediately exposed to your feared object in flooding can be quite a shock and difficult to handle, which may not be suitable for many people. Secondly, systematic desensitization might be more successful than flooding, as it allows patients to make progress in small steps, 
and in their own time, rather than being required by the therapist. And this means the patient is in control. As a result, this may enable more people to access the treatment of systematic desensitization and find it more successful. One of the main limitations of the use of flooding relates to ethical issues. This is because when people are immediately exposed to their fear, it can cause a great degree of emotional harm. Furthermore, being presented with your fear so dramatically does run the risk of not actually treating the phobia and instead reinforcing the phobia if flooding is ended too soon or not done properly. As such, it can potentially not protect people from harm. However, one of the strengths of flooding in comparison to systematic desensitization relates to cost. Ogren in 2011 found that flooding was a highly effective technique and much quicker than other treatments. Because flooding does not require the gradual process and build up like systematic desensitization, it can take less time and thus is less expensive. For this reason, it could be argued that flooding is more accessible. Finally, one way to evaluate the behavioural treatment of phobias is to compare it to other treatments. Biological treatments involve the use of drug medication such as beta blockers and benzodiazepines. These drugs can be very beneficial as short-term solutions as they reduce the physiological response that people have to a fear. This doesn't take as long as the sessions used by systematic desensitization and also doesn't have the problem of being emotionally shocking and traumatic like flooding. In this regard, drug treatments could be argued to be better. However, it is always worth bearing in mind that drugs are not a long-term solution as they are not dealing with the cause of the problem and they can come with serious side effects, particularly in the case of benzodiazepines. Therefore, a combined approach of drug treatment and behavioural treatments may be a good way forward for some people. For more information on biological treatments and drug therapy, check out this video on treatments of OCD. And for more videos relating to the topic of psychopathology, check out this playlist. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you found it helpful, consider subscribing. See you in the next one.